Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz. And I'm David Osmond. Okay, I have a very important question for you, David. Uh, how important? Very. Like it's like most hard important question of your life. Sweat. Okay, all right. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Drum roll. Have you ever gotten a manicure or pedicure? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, I have. A mani pedi? Oh, yeah. Every week. You got to look good, right? No, no, weekly. Not You're not headed week. there now after weekly, the podcast. Very weekly. <laughs> no, I have. And to be honest with you, it is actually very nice. I gotta be honest. And my, I mean, my daughters, my wife, of course, and they have their own machines at home where they'll do their own nails. My wife has a full thing. She's very That's talented. Fun. A couple of their friends even have, they'll, they'll go and pay, uh, have a little side small business. Yeah. They're teenagers, but artists. And they'll come home and they'll have like the coolest like designs on their nails. My daughters, I'm like, yeah. that actually is really fantastic. And the girls love it. And so the times I've been able to join them in uh, over the years, I, it, it's kind of nice, especially for, I got to say, the pedicure. Sure. I'm not going to lie. I was, okay, that, that's good. Uh, and you mentioned art. I mean, like you see these days people and their nails and they, it is like they walk in and you're looking at their nails and it's like works of art. Hand I mean, it's painted, like, like wow, hours of time on this. You know, um, I got to sit down with Aaliyah. She uh, owns Wicked West Nails. And we talked about like what's trending in nails, um, challenges she's faced while starting her business, working and collaborating with other businesses, um, advice, like when you're getting your nails done, she is killing it in her business. Her, <laughs> if you check out her Instagram page, I looked at it before and I'm like, oh my gosh, like this, how long did it take you to do this? How long to do this? You know, she gives advice on if you're going to get your nails done, uh -huh. do you bring pictures? She has an opinion oh, okay. on that. So yeah. Yeah. W where do you find your inspiration? Like you bring ideas and then it's right. like, this is a work of art. Yeah. By the way, it's not nails. It's Nels. 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 That's here in Utah. Uh, We're Nels. Mountain. Get your nails done at Wicked West Nels. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nels. It's, it's so much fun. Should we just give it a listen? I, yeah, go ahead. You lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to talk with our podcast guest, Aaliyah Mathias. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Sure. I've been stalking your Instagram and looking at your Wicked West Nails page. You truly are an artist. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, it's been um, so amazing kind of getting into this this field of work, um, especially just identifying more on the end of an artist. So it's, it's a really cool way to be able to put my art out there and for people to to be able to support me in that way. Well, you're very, very good at it. So Aaliyah, tell us how you got into this and a little bit of your background. Yeah, yeah. So whenever I um, first moved to Salt Lake, so I moved here about five years ago, and I um, was working part-time at a smoothie shop in town, and then I was working part-time at a nail salon just at the front desk. Um, it was like a very, like, non-traditional like walk-in gel nail salon um and then I kind of got into nails as a client and I started going to somebody who was private uh, much like myself and I kind of asked her I was like how did you get into this type of work like it was really interesting and and I moved out here dropped out of college so I, I was really young still at the time I was only like 19 and so I was really just trying to figure out like what exactly it was that I wanted to do and so she was kind of like, yeah, dude, like you could totally do nails. It's so easy. And then she um, got me in touch with this lady. Her name's Melissa. So my mentor, um, she's located down in Springville and she was like, she does apprenticeship. She's really great. Um, at the time, Melissa wasn't really taking anybody. And then like six months later, my nail tech like sent me her application and was like, dude, she's like taking apprentices. You should try it out. So then I like filled out the application and then I almost didn't go for my interview, which is kind of crazy to think about now <laughs> Yeah. because um, I like never, I was like, do I want to do nails? I'm like, this is so random for me. And my whole family was like, you working in the beauty industry? That's crazy. Um, cause it, it just definitely wasn't something that I maybe valued as much at the time. And then I took the opportunity, went to the interview and then she wrote me next week and was like, hey, I would love to have you. And then I was like, well, I guess I'm doing this thing. So it was a very random calling for me. It was definitely not something that I, like, had always planned on doing. Um, but, yeah, kind of was just that opportunity. And I went ahead and, and took it. And so now we're here. Is that when you went in to start Wicked West Nails? Um, yeah. So I came up with Wicked West Nails during my apprenticeship, I had just briefly started and she was like, okay, like you guys got to start thinking about like Instagram names, like really good ways of like branding yourself. And I remember she gave us this syllabus that had like a ton of people's Instagram names on it. And I'm originally from Kansas. So a lot of people don't know this, but how I came up with the name was I kind of was like, okay, I'm from Kansas. How can I like kind of deeply root that into my name? And then I was like, oh my gosh, like the Wicked Witch of the West, like Wizard of Oz. And so that it came pretty naturally. I was like, oh, my gosh, Wicked West. Like, Wicked West is cool because now I live out, like, towards the West Coast. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was 
I'm not normally very like good at stuff like that. And so now with my own students, I'm like, you're all on your own. I don't know how to help you. Like I'm so bad at finding names like that, but it just worked out so, so perfectly. And then I kind of just ran with it. It is so fun. It's a great name. And your designs, yeah, you. your designs are incredibly unique and so detailed. Can oh you gosh, thank you. Can you walk us through your creative process when you're like designing a new set of nails? Yeah. Yeah. So you know, with my clientele, so I, I don't take any new clients now. So I have an amazing, amazing group of like loyal clientele that have been coming to me for a couple of years. So it's been probably about a year or so since I've taken new clients. And um, a lot of my clients bring in inspo that are like non nail related. So a lot of the things that I get are like other people's pieces of work, um, like room and interior design is like a really great inspo. Any like random textiles, textures, things like that. I use a lot of fabrics and things like that as inspo. So kind of using inanimate objects as my inspiration is always a good starting point. Um, and anymore, a lot of my clients kind of just like let me freestyle. So I normally will start with some sort of textile or print or something that like makes me feel inspired. Um, and then I kind of just break it down into different categories. So I start with like color, like what does my palette want to look like? Do I want any textures in there? Can I do matte? Can I add some sort of like speckle in there just to give it another like layer of depth? So um, things that I personally really love doing are those really intensive designs that have a lot of layers to it because they truly look like a piece of art when they're all said and done. It's so true. Okay. What's the best way if someone is, you know, they see like a new creation, that something they want on their nails is bringing a photo, you know, on their phone. Is that like the best way? Yeah. Yeah. Normally. So I always, um, I always recommend sometimes people love to bring in like photos of like other people's nails, um, which can always be fun, but I always recommend to people, if you want something really original and something really different that you've never seen before, challenge yourself to bring in something else that inspires you. So even if that's like when you're out and about in the city and you see a mural and you're like, wait, these colors feel so amazing to me. This like feels like it feels my cup, you know, like take a picture of it and bring that in. Um, anything that makes you as a client feel inspired always makes me really happy because I recognize my like privilege in being an artist for my job and making money this way. A lot of my clients work nine to fives. A lot of my clients work in the corporate world. And so for them, it gives them that like little piece of creativity mm -hmm. in their day to day. And they get so excited about it every month when they come in. And then when they start like learning about the materials and things that I use, they're like, wait, could we use that little thing that we used last time? Like, and it's, and it's really rewarding in that way to be able to like bring that creative front to other people's lives that maybe don't get to um, indulge in that every day. Like I do. Sure. Well, sure. nail day is the best day when you get that break from, you know, your work day or yeah! just to come and get your nails done and be creative. It's like the best feeling in the yeah. world. Yeah. And it's been really nice too. Cause I, with the vibe of our shop too, we definitely, steer more on the side of like this is like a really high energy shop it's like a really happy place um i think in the beauty industry a lot of people lean into like their hairstylists or their um, nail technicians or their estheticians or whomever to kind of be their therapist and that's a big boundary in my life that i've actually created of like i'm not your therapist um, but i'm your friend and like you know we can equally have those conversations those like hard conversations but um it's more of a space to like really let go and have fun and um and less of like a space that we, we don't really we just don't try to make any room for like the negative connotation in life, you know? So it is really fun to kind of let people let their guard down and kind of just indulge in the, in the creative things of life. Sure. And have fun. Do you have any favorite sources for creating? Like if someone is wondering, I don't know where to look, I don't know, you know, where to go. Do you, do people still use like Pinterest? Yeah. And you know what? I always challenge people do not look at nail photos on Pinterest. I think all the nail photos on Pinterest suck really bad, in my opinion. They're, like, super outdated, right? Because we think about, like, when Pinterest kind of started. And that used to be, like, our root of, like, yeah. okay, I'm going to paint my nails at home. Yeah. It's like, let's see, like, an <laughs> easy do-it-yourself do it type. Um, but looking up, like, textiles, anything that's really um, inspiring to you. On my website, I have, like, a little hyperlink to my Pinterest board as well. So you can see what I've been loving and see what I've been saving. And then I always recommend to my clients, Instagram and TikTok are a total search engine these days. Um, so that's my, that's my biggest suggestion is you can always look up nail things on TikTok, on Instagram, if you go to any of my posts um, and go to any of the hashtags in my descriptions, 
Um, click on any of those hashtags, and those are all really, really good sources of inspiration to see what other people have been working on, too. That's really good advice. Um, what are some yeah. of the biggest challenges that you'd say that you faced in your career as a nail artist? Oh, my gosh. I think that no one sets you up to deal with working one-on-one -on -one with clients. Um, it's like something that I feel like I'm like definitely a pro at now. I've got my boundaries set nice and well, but I think, you know, over time, um, when we think about like the early two thousands, when nails and hair and like having your people really like started getting really big, I think that the overall environment was like, okay, you are the sole provider for your client, anything that they say goes. And, you know, now it's like 2024 and like we all have things going on and things in our lives. So I think something that can be really hard for new artists um, and myself alike is that you have to be able to set those boundaries with your clients. And, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, like you have to put yourself first. And so if that looks like not working Saturdays because you want your Saturdays off, like you got to put yourself first in that. Um, and then your clients will always follow suit, you know, so kind of really just acknowledging what your needs are as an individual, as an artist, as a service provider, um, and understanding that, like, if you're not giving yourself the best that you can, then you can't give your clients the best, you know? Mm, it's so true. You got to fill your own yeah. cup first, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you find most rewarding then about your work? Oh, my gosh. You know, moving away from my family and being out here um, has been really eye-opening in the sense of like, I see my clients more than I see my family. I see my clients more than I see my parents. Um, these people have turned into like true, true, true family to me. And I've gone through so many life changes. So many of my clients have gone through so many life changes, you know, as a nail technician, like, no, I'm not their therapist, but yes, I am their friend in the sense of like, I hold all their secrets and I know all the crazy things that are going on in people's lives. And, and if that's good or bad and, um, you know, being able to create those relationships and giving people that like safe community space has been so, so, so rewarding. I always, whenever I started doing nails, I it was like one of those things where I was like, I don't know if I like this. It feels so um, materialistic, so surface level. And now fast forward to me, like having my own shop that I rent space out to um, other artists and things like that. It, it really makes me realize that I have the opportunity here to give people a safe place to work, a safe place for people of all types to come and get their nails done without being judged. Um, and being able to give people just that little bit of a safe space in their life is so, so, so rewarding to me. Sure. Yeah. It's like your time to just chill and talk and you've, yeah, I'm sure you become like yeah. really good friends and family with some of these people. Yeah, and it's really cool, too, because sometimes, you know, we'll have full house in here. All of us are working with our clients, and then we'll have random clients that just pop in just because they want to say hi, or they'll bring us treats or whatever. And just acknowledging and knowing that we've, like, kind of been able to create that, like, safe place for people to just, like, come pop in. And, and everybody that comes here knows that they always have a place to go if they ever need it. And if they just need to get out of a house, like, we always tell our clients that. So it's been really, really awesome to be able to create that kind of environment. That just kind of feels like home, you know? Yeah, sure. Well, do you have a memorable client story, speaking of that, that stands out to you? Oh, my gosh. I mean, I have so many. Um, I have so many. And, and really, I think that's, like, well, again, one of those big things of, like, I hold so much for, like, so much space for so many clients um, that we all can relate on, you know, when I've had clients um, be able to share with me, like, I'm having a baby or, unfortunately so, like, when people have, like, maybe, like, lost their opportunity to have a baby or when they're like getting married, um, health struggles, all of the things like those all stick with me forever and ever and ever. And then, you know, again, coming back into 2024, right? Like businesses have to make a lot of changes. We have to like step up for our communities and ways to reach, um, to reach everyone and support everyone. So being an ally to all of our trans community members, to everybody that's in the LBGTQ plus community and being able to like really provide them that safe space. And I think it's always so amazing when people are like something that I'll never forget is like when my clients are like, thank you so much for giving me just the space as, um, as I am and who I am to just come mm -hmm. in, get my nails done. And I just get to feel like myself. And that's like one of those things that I will always so, so closely hold to my heart because Everyone deserves to feel good about themselves. Everyone deserves to come get their nails done and feel unbothered by that, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Um, and it sucks to know that that's like a standard that people think that 
you know, maybe going to the nail salon and getting something that I didn't ask for, or having to like communicate differently about what my needs are as a client, things like that. It, it bums me out to hear that all the time. Cause I'm like, wait, your nail salon experience shouldn't be like that. So um, definitely just getting that, like that honest feedback from people of like being like, thank you for creating this space. Um, I will always hold like so closely to me. Where people feel like they belong. We all deserve yeah, that, right? Yeah. And no matter who you are, I'm like, it should never be dependent on if you identify of, of this type or that type or whatever. Everyone should have the opportunity to just feel good about themselves and go give themselves a little treat, you know? Amen. Amen. And, you know, on the flip side, running your own business, I'm sure, can be tough. What are some key lessons you've learned from, like, building and growing Mm. Wicked West Nails. Yeah, you know, this is like a really touchy topic and I'm going to dive straight into it. I think being able to have an, um, a relationship with money of abundance and not a ser- scarcity mindset with money has taken me in such a far, far away. Mm. I've never made so much money and also spent so much money on a thing in my entire life. Um, and that's like one of those things that can be really trying because it is so scary to put all your eggs in one basket. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's a wild ride of, you know, realizing like it costs so much money really to keep a business open. Um, but once you kind of get everything, all your ducks in a row, um, and, and again, it'll always be an ebb and flow. And that's like a struggle that I deal with all the time. Like even like last week, like I got declined for a thing that I was really hoping for to expand on our shop. And, and it's all about being flexible and being able to redirect and being like, you know what, that didn't work, but like, we got to try something else. Cause we're going to, we're going to keep the ship sailing. Like we're going to keep on rolling with the punches, you know? So just being able to be flexible and be okay with being told no and, and being able to like redirect has been you know, something that I've really had to lean into and, and it kind of just is what it is, but, um, leaning into that makes it a whole lot easier than, um, just being upset about it. You know, that's really good advice. Be flexible. Yeah. That's really yeah. good. Cause yeah. everything changes. Always, everything always changing. Changes. And you, you just gotta, I, I always tell like my students to like, be prepared for more things to go wrong than you could ever imagine. And then your expectations will always be set low and you'll never be disappointed. Mm, that is good advice. And speaking yeah. of that, do you have any more advice that you could give someone that, you know, is wanting to start their own nail art business? My biggest advice is if you want to start any business of any type, go full fledged, dive on in, take, take the opportunity if you have it. Um, it'll never be perfect. So I, I definitely used to be like more on the side of like perfectionism where I I used to have these crazy expectations of like, okay, everything has to be perfect before I do it or before I launch it or before I do this. And, and, you know, being okay with things not being perfect, um, really is one of my biggest pieces of advice to anyone wanting to start any type of business. Mm. Um, if you have the opportunity to do it, recognize your privilege in that go for it. Um, and And you really can do so much more than you could ever imagine. Even now, like, right, I'm, like, sitting in in my salon right now, and it's one of those things that I'm, like, wait, I own this place. And it's, like, still one of those things that I'm, like, is this reality ever going to set in? Like, (laughs) you know, and that sounds so silly, but it's so true of just, like, I have surprised myself in ways beyond belief. And I think most business owners can, can say the same, that I think none of us business owners ever expected to be able to do the things that we have and, um, you know, really leaning into your community and understanding that it's never going to be perfect. It's never going to be something that you can do on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, It always takes a village and just being able to accept help from others and and acknowledge all those things will take you a really, really long way. But if you're thinking thinking about starting a business, I always just tell people, I'm like, just go for it. You have nothing to lose right now. Just go for it. You know, that's really good advice. Thank you for that. I think that helps people, you know, listening, thinking whether it's a nail art business or, you know, another business, just go for it because it's sometimes in our heads, we're the ones that we're the only ones that are kind of stopping us in our head. We're thinking we're not going to be able to do it. We're not, you know, good enough. We're not, we don't know enough, but just go and you just learn as you go. And you know, just being able to claim them, like claim whatever it is that you're going after for yourself. Like I never, never, never planned on opening a salon. Um, I always was like pretty against it. Actually. I was always like, I'm not going to ever open a salon. Like I want to stay solo. And then I taught a few students and had a few apprentices. And then I noticed, I was like, Oh my gosh, there's nowhere for them to work. So I guess I'm just going to do this. 
and then just claimed i'm like okay we're opening a salon and everything just fell into into place after that so really just being able to tackle things head on one thing at a time again you'll never have it perfect but if you just go for it you'll you'll never be disappointed true okay going back to the nail side of it what are some of the latest trends in nail art that you're excited about Ooh. Um, okay. I'm really excited. You know, we're coming into, it's the end of summer, um, kind of the end of summer, right? We're like in July. Nail techs always think a couple months ahead. Um, hairstylists always think a couple months ahead on what the forecasted trends are. Um, I know Halloween nail art is going to be popping this year, like none other. So excited about that. Yes. Um, aura, um, like the airbrush kind of look trend is always popping off. Same with chromes. So really excited to get into that and some of those darker toned shades um, and kind of exiting the neon the neon color scheme and, and again kind of heading into those darker more sultry colors and things like that. Um, but really just all of the different textures and metallics and colors and things like that I really really love when talking about like chromes and auras. Yes, going into fall, those nails are always yeah. so fun and dark. Yeah. And I love, I love that season. Um, what are your goals for Wicked West Nails in the next few years? Would you say? Yeah, so I'm really excited to announce that we have um, our full salon in South Salt Lake, and then next door we're starting to expand a little bit. We have um, a little studio space um, where we have a couple of estheticians renting. So one of our girls is doing tooth gems, facials, and then our other gal she does um brow laminations waxes lash lifts things like that so we're kind of like inching our way through the beauty industry a little bit more into the aesthetics realm which i love and then um you know hopefully it is not confirmed but we are talking about the potential of a second location or hopefully in the next five years expanding to um some sort of storefront location more in the downtown area so those are kind of some things on the horizon but you know again as a business owner it sounds so crazy but goal setting like that is not something that I do a whole lot of which I think will surprise people but I definitely kind of more just rock on the side of like let's see what kind of opportunities come our way because you never know what could change or happen again not setting goals um kind of goes against the grain from what most people do but um again it kind of keeps my expectations low so then whenever opportunities arise and um, I feel like I have the I have the brain space to just take it on because I I'm not too locked in on any other plans. Yeah, so, you, you got to do what works for you. That's great. Yeah, you know? yeah. So, That's really and I know, great. Like I said, that kind of goes against the grain, but you know, those are all just opportunities we have in the next couple of years. But nothing set in stone and. And if some of those things work and some things don't, then that's great too. And, and we'll just keep rolling with it as it comes. Okay. Speaking of that, any upcoming like collabs you're excited about? Yes. Yes. Um, so we are now a permanent fixture of Girl Dinner, um, which is a really awesome event held here in Salt Lake City. Um, it kind of highlights a few women identified chefs here in Salt Lake City that make these amazing, amazing small plates. Um, and then there's always a ton of other vendors there too. So we'll be there doing um, little bits of food nail art on people's nails, um, talking about the shop, selling merch. And then our girl Maddie will also be there doing tooth gems. And then if you keep an eye on our Instagram, we will be having our one year anniversary party at Wicked West Nails sometime in September or October. So we're kind of still working on our plans for that. And then we're also planning on doing a fall market with um, a bunch of our favorite vendors, probably closer to October this year. So we're going to kind of wait until it cools off a bit because it's been so freaking hot out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, we're going to invite all of our favorite vendors back to do a big old, a big old market in, in October. So we're really excited about all the events and things that we have coming up. And then the whole shop will be headed down to Provo to Utah County um, in September for the Utah Nail Expo as well. So we'll be posting a ton of coverage on that and sharing all the fun new products and things that we buy too. So we're really excited. A lot of fun things. Okay, can you yes. share a fun fact about yourself that your followers might not know? Oh my gosh, yeah. Um, let's see. So I actually, a lot of people don't know this, but... For like 14 years or so, I actually was a cyclist and I raced BMX. So that's what brought me cool. um, kind of out further to the West Coast. So, um, yeah, and I, I'm a huge outdoorsy gal. So I love climbing. I love camping. I love being at the lake. Um, You're so in the right place kind of, here in Utah then. Yeah, yeah, I definitely am. So it's been such an amazing transition being here. And um, and then just anything that's like community event wise, like if there's any sort of market you can count on me to be there. I'm always out and about. Uh, love supporting all my friends, small local businesses and things like that, too. So 
Oh, what's been so fun hearing everything you have going on, a lot coming up in your future and yes, yes. and how much um, work you put into building this and how successful you're doing. Um, we're going to do what's called, as we wrap up, the Fresh Five. And these are just five questions I'm going to ask you really quick. Are you ready? I'm ready for it. Okay. First one, music or podcast? Ooh, music always. Okay. Driver or passenger? Driver. Okay. You're on a flight. Where are you headed? Ooh, probably on some sort of vacation, but not a relaxing one. Always, always a busy packed one to see a new place. Okay. I love that. And then, um, what's your favorite pizza toppings? Ooh, my favorite pizza topping is like, hey, I was just talking to someone. I'm going to do a shameless little plug for my favorite place, Slackwater. Last night, I just had their grape and gorgeous pizza, and the grape pizza combo was so good. Okay, so I have tried not it. tried that, but I bet it's really good there. And I'm not like a, I'm not like a sweet pizza girl normally, but I'm into it. That sounds good. I'm going to have to try that one. Okay, last one. What makes you happy and what makes you smile? Oh my gosh, what makes me happy and makes me smile is just seeing people do what they love every day. And I I really just get so much satisfaction out of that, especially in my day-to-day, in my shop, just getting to know that all the people around me just genuinely get to do the thing that they love to do. And and yeah, I love to see people pursuing things that they love. And well, fill their cup. You can tell. You, I mean, I can hear in your voice how much you love what you do and how happy you are for other people and making other people feel beautiful with their amazing nails. Where can we follow you and, you know, for all the details? Yes, yes. So if you're on Instagram, we're at wicked.west.nails. Nice and easy. Um, all of our highlight bubbles on our Instagram page um, highlight all of the people who work in the shop um, with their booking links and things like that. So you can kind of get a vibe for maybe what nail technician would be great for you. Um, and then we also have our estheticians from next door plugged on there. And then you can find us online at wickedwestnails.com. And again, we have bios on there for all of our people. So you can kind of see what, what kind of vibe they give, um, the different types of art techniques and things they do. So then you can find the, the nail artist that fits you best. Um, and then we have our merch on there as well. Um, and then we post all of our upcoming events also on our Instagram. So um, you can find me on our stories quite often. Very cool. Aliyah, it's been so fun chatting with you. Thank you for sitting down with me. I'm fresh off the set. Appreciate you. Likewise. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe. And we will see you next week. Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.